<laughs> did you let your mom buy anything for you at the mall? <laughs> she did. <laughs> I did technically, yes. <laughs> mom, I want this yeah. hair tie yeah. in this dress. Yes. Damn yeah. it. It's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> This episode is made possible by our therapy partners, Dirty B and Pickets. Pickett. From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. And now, broadcasting from the churn, that's Jim, that's Whitney, I'm Nick. It's time for some Pod Therapy. And I'm Whitney's mom. <laughs> pew, pew, New Mexico. <laughs> Whitney's mom is really here. This is the part of the show that the regular audience can hear. So all that weird, profane stuff we did, that's only for the paying people. These folks get the G-rated show. Oh, okay. right. So if you could clean up your filthy mouth. I sure will. We'd appreciate it. Okay? I will. When did you learn that she was on a podcast? Oh, yeah. Was that's it a on really the way to the question. studio And tonight? have you ever heard it before? Yeah. Just about. Actually, it was that's just so yesterday. Funny. Yes. Yesterday. <laughs> I love that you've been on the show for a year. <laughs> Never sent it to your mom. To be fair, when I went to visit her a few months ago, I mentioned the podcast. She's like, you're on a podcast? I'm like, yeah. I That's was a like, podcast. Let me see. Send it to you. Let me oh, find a good episode great. to send. And then I never oh, did. No, Because so. you couldn't find a There's good, no episode. good episode. This is the first episode yeah. she's ever heard. Whitney, so. you yeah. do not need to explain any of that to me. I 100% get it. In you, fact, I would have covered for you. If, if I was like at that Summerlin Mall and you were like, oh my God, Jim, this is my mom. And I've been like, hi, I'm just a fellow therapist. And I just, I don't know her. I would just assume you don't want her to know. And I would have just covered for you. Jim would have been like, no, 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 we're not on a podcast together. Uh, your yeah. daughter and I are yeah. Having an affair. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Whitney, why it's is much that better than sharing a podcast? Yeah, why is that man wearing a shirt with your face on it that says Pew Pew Texas? Oh, that's right. Have you, has Whitney shown you the merchandise that she's that she's Whitney on? Whitney has fans. No. Yes, Whitney has international I to, fans. I need to what? show it to you. We had a conference, <laughs> like a big home. convention a couple months ago, and there were fans that showed up wearing shirts of Whitney. <laughs> To celebrate the fact that they love her. It was so there was sweet. a costume contest. People dressed up like Whitney's ducks oh, and so just the walked around exist. as, as the ducks. It may yeah. not be real. <laughs> yeah, no. So Whitney has been hiding a whole secret life from you. She has. She's mm. kind of famous. No, yeah. I, know. I consider us what? F list celebrities? Ooh. Z? Did we make X? the F list? I think we're. Oh. Yeah, there it is. There's the Pew Pew Texas. Yep. There you go. So me. fans of the show mm-hmm. have their pew own pew little Texas. Whitney art going on. <laughs> Yep. I'll, I'll get you a shirt, Mom. Yeah, I think we're going to get a shirt. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we got to get her merch. That's yeah. yes. that's a given. My daughter's famous. She I is. Know. How yeah. does it feel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's finally made it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lived up to all the things I thought you were capable yes. of. I'm not and a, then some. Yeah, I'm not a dentist, but is yeah. this the next best thing? <laughs> No, still no. prefer dentist. Yeah, it's still, yeah. Yeah, dentist, <laughs> still the money. Yeah, yeah the money. Yeah, well, that's been pretty true. great. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, now that you are officially aware of the show, um, we answer questions that people write in, and we try to give them bad advice that some okay. of them, you know, seem to think we're offering serious advice. We accidentally give good advice every so often. Every so often, <laughs> but it is purely by. Before accident. we move on to questions, I do have one last mom question for all of you who want to hear all the questions. Patreon.com/therapy. You can hear us take listener questions from our Discord. You can find out directly. how Whitney got her name. That was a big reveal. That I was, was a surprised. big reveal for me. <laughs> and you know what? I was 100% satisfied with that answer. <laughs> yeah, that honestly. Yeah. Answer. Honestly, yeah. it's times answer. like this. I wish we were on Twitch or oh, some sort yes. of video stream. <laughs> yes. So we could see how red yes. Whitney's face oh, got. Oh, it's glorious. <laughs> yeah, the awkward squirming every yeah. question of like, oh God, oh God, oh God, is oh God, it, oh God. Is oh God. it hot in here? Yeah. <laughs> Very sweaty. Very sweaty. <laughs> so my last mom question is there a special meal that whenever you visit, you have to make for Whitney or whenever she visits you, it's like, Mommy, can you make me that thing I like? What's what's Whitney's special meal? Uh, McDonald's? Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Say Chick-fil-A, yeah. 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 Sh- sure, yeah. honey, I'll get that for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Remember she said she didn't teach me how to cook? <laughs> That's right. We're not wrong. <laughs> Mom, can you make me that thing, you know, the one that you made for, yeah, peanut butter? Yeah. yeah. Just a lot of that. Peanut butter on a cracker? Yeah. yeah. And remember when I said Peter was cooking for the That's last right. two days. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Check that out. The meat apocalypse that Peter is dealing with. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, fun times. We've got some great questions uh, for this episode of the show and how do you feel about Peter guest? being referred to as a meat apocalypse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we also have a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> I mean, we will. We will. Yeah. <laughs> That's hey, coming. That's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> we can, we'll have that by the end yeah. of the hour. <laughs> we'll that That's uh, an appropriate name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the man can sling the Pete meat. the meat. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> Pete wow. the meat apocalypse. <laughs> oh, th- there's going to be. Yes. Everybody, feel free to just refer to Peter as meat. I'm not, yeah. and I'm, yeah. like, I'm not even going to tell him. Just whenever you know the merch yeah. pops up, I'll be like, surprise. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Got you a shirt. Yeah. yeah. You're you guys talk it. about me on the show? <laughs> what? <No. laughs> yeah, he's probably like, wait, you're on a podcast? <laughs> Yeah, just, he didn't know either. This no. whole thing has been one of the best kept secrets in history. <laughs> yeah. He was just hoping it was just an affair with Jim. Yeah, <laughs> just, please tell <laughs> me. Please news. tell me you were just really drunk. You're not actually <laughs> recording shit, are you? <laughs> For two, a year? Good lord! <laughs> Think of the ducks. All right, we've got some great questions coming in on this episode. The first one to lead off is doubting my decision to go no contact with dad from Tom. Hey, pod therapy crew. I'm a 33 year old male and I have no relationship with my biological father. I began our estrangement by going no contact with him in about 2010 or 2011 when he abandoned my mom and brothers to go live seven hours away. From that time until 2016, he showed nothing to suggest that he was ready or capable of having an adult relationship with me. But perhaps in a moment of weakness, I reached out to him in 2016 to see if we could rekindle the relationship. In my letter to him, though, I said there were going to be some serious boundaries in place, and he said he would respect them. Feeling encouraged, I drove the seven hours to go see him for a weekend, and it went fine. He seemed happy enough to see me for the first time in six years, but I wasn't convinced he was committed to change or really all that interested in stepping up to be the father I needed him to be. But I tried as much as I could to give him the benefit of the doubt. That was until 2017, when he entirely regressed and broke all boundaries as if they weren't there in the first place. My mom's mom died that year, and a few months later I was texting my dad, and he asked me to call his mother, who I'd never been too close with. I told him I wasn't entirely comfortable with that, and his response was, you would call your mom's mom, this is no different. Clearly, that struck a chord. In that moment, I said, fuck this, and blocked him on the spot. I haven't spoken to him since. In the years since then, he has been trying incessantly to get in touch with me. I'm talking about calling my work looking for me, emailing my work literally every job that I've had since 2017. I guess he Googles me periodically. Looking for me, calling my grad school looking for me, you get the idea. It's gotten to the point where I look over my shoulder every now and again, and I have paranoid thoughts that anything I do on the internet will be found and used by him to get a better understanding of where I am. I feel stalked. Now it's 2024, and I just got married. Yay! As luck would have it, my wife's mom isn't doing well, and her visible mortality is making me doubt my no-contact stance with my dad. I know he's loony, but I can't help but feeling sad that he's likely all alone in this life. None of his kids talk to him, and he's just out there, wasting away. I don't think at the end of the day I want to reach out to him, but I'm scared that I'll find out one day that he's died, and regret not having at least said goodbye. At the end of the day, I'm mourning not having a relationship with my dad, and it's tearing at me knowing that I can, technically, If he's still alive, it leaves me with a bit of a hole in my heart, no matter how much pain he's caused me. Even though he sucks, I just want a parent, and I'm embarrassed to admit that because of how objectively awful he's been to me and my family. Any thoughts on dealing with the remorse around permanent no contact with a shitty dad? All thoughts other than Jim's are welcome. (laughs) Love, Tom. (laughs) Fuck you, Tom. (laughs) So, Whitney, you don't call your mom very often. Let's talk about... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she goes months without speaking months, to her mom. Months, years. She has to fly all the way out here to make sure you're alive. I had to fly to Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. serve cocaine Be duck. disappointed yeah. Yeah. with the Thanksgiving Not meal. Easy. <laughs> no contact. That's a tough one. Yeah. I feel like this is kind of a hot topic yeah. in social media realms right now. Yes. The no contact with parents and parents having a difficult time accepting that and understanding why kids go adult children go no contact with them um i think the feelings of confusion are really valid 
because what most of those parents don't understand is it is still hurtful Mm. even on the kid when they go no contact. I think they think, oh, my kid's just being an asshole or... Right. I'm hurting and they're not. I'm hurting and they're not. They're just like, ha ha, yay, I don't have to spend time with you. But it actually is hurtful for the Mm. child too. I mean, let's pause there for just a second though because I mean, there is... There's something to that. I don't know if the uh, truth isn't the right word, but I mean, there is something to that. The the feeling of I have had communication cut off with me. Mm. Like the, uh, the other person is the one taking the action and they're ignoring the actions that they took that kind of precipitated the whole thing. Sure. I'm on trial and they're never on exactly. trial. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, that is that is a weird, that, that, that's a weird little kind of crossroad thing there that, that happens, I, I would bet. There's mutual feelings about it for sure. Yeah. But, you know, Whitney, to your point, it is a very millennial thing mm-hmm. to, like, block the parent. That is a thing. And I'm seeing it all the time on Facebook yeah. and stuff where I'll see, like, people that I grew up with and they'll post something like, um, dear everybody that follows my account, um, do not uh, respond to DMs from this person. That is my parent. They are no contact. If they ask you for pictures of my children or whatever, like, don't. You don't understand. And I'm like, damn. Like, there's wow. there's a lot of this. It is a really, really common thing. And it's a big decision to make. Yeah, it is. Um, it, Do you think people make it more readily now than they have in the past? Is is, is now? Yeah, absolutely. You, you, I, you, I you, think you think so. things are different now? I think so. I think it's, it's just not just because... how it's being reported. Oh, I mean, that could be. Maybe we're just more aware of it now. But yeah. I do get the sense that, like, younger generations today, uh, like, it's more acceptable to just kind of, like, draw those boundaries and just be kind of in the same way that, like, divorce has changed. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, like, back, you know, 50 years ago, well, no one would ever get divorced. Right. You know, you, you, no matter what happens, you have to do that. And then it kind of I became... I remember the kid in elementary school whose parents were divorced. Like, the one. Yeah. yeah I remember yeah. the yeah, kid yeah, yeah, yeah. whose yeah. parents were divorced. Yeah. Right. And, and then, but then it just became more socially acceptable, and it was more like, okay, well... No, the philosophy changed. Like, well, there's no reason I have to be in an unhappy marriage. Yeah. Right. Or stick you know? it out. And yeah, there's, and so there's no point to doing that. And so yeah. it, it kind of changed. That's I think it's comparison. kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. To like, uh, you know, there's adult. a priority of health now. And I think that's one sure. of the things, like, even that emotional health well, of marriage. It's the same way. It's, it's also, you see the same thing in employment. Yeah. As yeah, well. Like, yeah. there's, there's, I, I think younger generations take a, a stronger stance on like my mental and emotional health right. and my job work or job home life separation. Right. Whereas back in the day, I don't think that was really the case. You know, another piece to this too, of like, is it more common now to block parents and stuff back in the day? I remember we'd hear from my grandma like once a week, like we'd all go next to the rotary dial phone and like talk to grandma for an hour. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. And we'd like spend a long distance hour, <laughs> you know, plan or whatever to talk like that. Your parents weren't that much in your life. If you didn't, and live right next to them. Mm. And I don't think it was like this all the time thing. So nowadays though, where people are like on the internet and seeing your whole life and commenting on things and have this constant ability to check on you, maybe it's more common to be like, look, you're intrusive in my life sometimes. Well, yeah, don't you don't have private. I didn't think about that, but you don't have the option of privacy. Whereas like, let's say in the nineties and before, you know, like when internet didn't exist, if yeah. you didn't want to see a parent or talk to them that often, you just didn't answer the phone just or didn't, didn't invite them over. Like, yeah. and then you just didn't see them. <laughs> right. Like, or you I just don't know. cook them a terrible meal for Thanksgiving and they just give up. Yeah. I wouldn't know anything about that because <laughs> yeah. she didn't give up. <laughs> <laughs> Take the hint, ma. <laughs> she didn't give up on me. <laughs> Well, she may after tonight. Yeah. Damn it. Now I that she knows the horrible Mom, truth. Go wait in the car. Go wait in the car. <laughs> the 120 degree car? Yeah. That's homicide. Crack, you crack, monster. Crack the windows. She crack loves windows. me. She's fine, guys. I cracked the windows. Cracked the the windows. sun went down. <laughs> She's in the shade. She's got her favorite popsicle. She's good. But like, I don't know. So mom, for you, what... Did you ever see anything like that? Like people just no contact with a parent or a sibling? I didn't know any. Yeah. Yeah. Like wasn't really a thing before. What if you didn't like the person or just somebody didn't respect your boundaries? What did people... You just got your boundaries disrespected. That's just what happened. Get your big brother. (laughs) (laughs) She did have a big brother, so it checks out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It is more common these days, though. And I've, I've talked to a lot of families... Well, I I've been I've been a therapist to the kind of grandparent in this scenario, the person who's being cut off mm. and who is saying like this is I want to see my grandchildren. I want to see, my grandchildren. Mm. I see, you know, I love my son. 
I'm going to die one day. What the hell? Like, you know, it, and, and they take umbrage with the issues they're being accused of where it's like, I wasn't excited enough whenever he visited me. What the hell? Like, I don't, I don't know how to meet what he's needing. Like he needs to work on that in therapy or whatever. Like mm. this sucks that like I die to him because I can't read his mind. And, and like, I've been on that side of the line and it's ideally in a perfect world writer. If you're, if you're in a place where you're saying, look, I'm questioning this decision as a permanent one it's no longer feeling authentically satisfying to me. And I feel like I'm protecting myself from somebody that maybe I don't need to be protected against right now. I would encourage you to consider if it's possible, if, if your father can use zoom, you know, like <laughs> doing some family therapy on this. I mean, opening up a conversation sometimes is at least a step in the right direction where some of this stuff can be discussed, or you can at least create like an agreement of what kind of contact we're allowed to have. But I don't know, man. I mean, if you take this all the way to the grave, that I don't know. It well, sounds like the writer's going to regret it. Well, yeah, it sounds like the writer's already regretting it. Right. You know, and so I guess my feedback would be, and and I, you you probably had good reason for doing this. I I don't think we have kind of the whole full story here of, as to everything that led up to you putting this boundary in place or this sure, distance. Sure. But here's something that kind of caught my attention, just doing a little bit of math, which. We all know it's not my strong suit. I mm. consider you a strong mathematic. We'll be the judge of that. Wow. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> that surprises me. Better than me. And it surprises everyone who knows me. Yeah. No, you tower um, over me in math. Like, oh, I, I look God. up to you. You're Shaq. Oh, that yeah. scares me. <laughs> <laughs> that, should, that should scare it's everybody. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Who's in charge okay. of the finances? <laughs> yeah, he's the treasurer, thank okay, God. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like this all went down about 14 years ago. Okay. Writer's 33. Yeah. That okay. makes the writer 19. Yeah. Okay. There's a big difference between your relationship with your father at 19 mm. and your relationship with your father at 33. Good point. Because one of the things that the writer says is something about him stepping up to be the father I needed him to be. Yeah. Well, writer, think about this yeah. and just kind of give some thought to, do you want him to be the father you needed him to be back then? Because if so, that's an unfair expectation. He's right. not going to be. Right. He's not going to be that father. You need to think about what does a father-son relationship look like when you're 33. Great point. And not when you're 19. Yeah. Because I think if you create that expectation, you're only going to be disappointed. Mm. And I think maybe that has something to do with everything that's still going on is you still have maybe this expectation of what this should look like as yes. opposed to a true adult father-son relationship. Yeah, good point. I mean, you. I think you just nailed it. I mean, not only is your math impeccable. Thank you. Uh, but I think your analysis you. is correct. Don't uh, don't double check me. On yeah, no, 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 no. Right. no, no. There will be no checking. <laughs> yeah. there, no, 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 no. I don't even remember what you said. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't possibly add those numbers or subtract whatever's called for. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. No, but like I think you make a really good point because the emotional capacity somebody had that you needed from them, but they lacked, mm -hmm. right, at 19, that gap is very, very wide, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And whenever you gave little extra shots and tried these little check-ins, Dad very quickly tripped over the situation, had unreasonable requests of you, was insensitive of what was going on in your life. It was enough that you were like, man, I don't need this in my life right now. But you're right, Nick, because what you need from your parent when you're in your 30s is a much less nurturing spot. I mean, you mm -hmm. might just want the legacy of their wisdom or just some connection to them at all. Or even you might even want the end of the resentment, the ability to, you know, seek and, and provide forgiveness to each other and just end well. That itself could be a really satisfying thing that you might need in your 30s. Yes, Mama. Don't you think that there has to be a point where you accept your parent? For the for who they yeah. are, that's a strong point, and you just have to accept them with their faults. Yeah, I was going to say that too because I think that's another thing that has changed over the years. Mm. Is like I remember, like I, I think when when you're a kid and there's like somebody in the family that's an asshole, it's just like. Yeah, they're an asshole. Yeah, yeah. I just no. Like we them. still, we still, that's we'll Uncle still so hang out so. on the Fourth of July. Asshole. We'll yeah. still. They're Christmas. invited to the barbecue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. just an asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody know? will yeah. cuss him out like, and that'll be the end of it. Yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> and yeah. I think that has changed to oh, it's yeah. like to it's like, oh no. Yes. You're gone. No, there's a trigger happy thing in the culture right now. And a lot of times I see it masked in language like boundaries. Mm -hmm. And people are like hyperzealous and they're they're weaponizing mental health language a lot of times and saying, yeah. like, no, my therapist told me to cut you off. And like I've I've had that happen to me. Where I've been talking to somebody and they've been like, yeah, my spouse said that their therapist told me that I have to cut off like my father and things like that. And I'm like, huh, mm. 
who's this other, who's the therapist? I know most of them in town. Yeah. Not many of them have the balls to tell you what yeah. you're supposed to do with your entire family tell tree. Tell your spouse yeah. to cut off your father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound, you know, it's like, well, they told me I have to do that for boundaries and for my own mental health. Well, and it's like, I don't know that many of us would tell you, don't adapt to the world around you, yeah. just shut it all away. And see, this is the thing that like kind of frustrates me is because we lose nuance with this. Yes. Are there examples where we need to be more proactive with boundaries and actually cut people off? Absolutely. Those exist. Yeah. And then there are some that we can still have relationships with and just adjust our expectations. Right. Both are okay. And it, it's a case by case basis. So it's really hard to say, no, if, if someone is miss, if, if someone is, is just being a jerk, cut them out, they're done. Right. I think that is not appropriate. I also think that having no boundaries whatsoever and just allowing everybody in your life, that's also inappropriate. There's a gradient there's, in the middle yes, there between whole... you don't exist and you have full access yeah. to me. You can have a limited access to me or like, yeah, you know what? I hang out with you sometimes. I only call you sometimes. You know, like I'm sure there's times whenever, you know, Whitney's talking to her mom and mom's like, why don't you ever call Rarely. me? And she's like, I don't like you that much. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll try harder. Mm -hmm. That's it. I guess. Okay. Thanks for not cutting me off though. There's room for this. But I, I think she makes a good point. There is something that I can't believe that you didn't touch on just now. No, and no. that is uh, being an adult. No. So you, you have, you have kind of like the stages of being an adult. You have that stage where it's like, oh, I've just graduated college or in that in that neighborhood. So you're like 20, 21, 22 years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. Kind of the next spot is kind of your early 30s. Like you've been out in the world now for about a decade. You've got your feet under you, hopefully. Like you, you, you've been you've been working. You've been establishing a career. You've been doing all that stuff. Holy shit, if I had to be held to things that I decided when I was 19, yeah. <laughs> when I'm 33. Yeah, good point. Like, man, like, you you made a decision when you were 19 years old. Yeah. And if that was the right decision or not, it kind of doesn't matter anymore, because that yeah. was, that was you know, more than a decade ago. You're not the person you were when you were 19. I bet your dad isn't the person that he was when you were 19 either. Right. Uh, he certainly wasn't the person that he was when you were a child. Like he, he's probably changed as well. Look at it. Try, try hard to look at it through a new set of eyes. Yeah. Try really hard to look at that and go like, I don't want to be tied by a decision that I made when I was 19. I don't know if you made that decision. I don't know if it was a, a well thought out decision. I don't right. know if it was a spur of the moment thing, uh, but whatever it was, you were 19 fucking years mm. old. Yeah. Like, the decisions I made when I was 19 are not the same decisions I would make today. Whitney was sure. stealing cars at 13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Profesh. Change is possible. Profesh. Profesh. <laughs> she was the getaway driver. <laughs> um, also, I don't want to forget that they did try to reconnect in their That's like true. mid to late yeah. 20s. Yeah, there was a time. I do think to just still continue on what like Jim and Jacob were saying in that you do have stages of adulthood that you go through. And it sounds like you are in this new stage and you're feeling a little bit of like needing some closure around mm -hmm. that again. Right. So I definitely... And probably some jealousy, uh, if, if like, lacking a better word, for, for people who have relationships with their parents Absolutely. and that kind of thing. Like you're around people yeah. that have this. Absolutely. And you're worried that's... that you're going to miss out on that. Yeah. 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 Um, so I would say, too, finding a way to revisit with uh, appropriate boundaries, <laughs> use of yeah. this term, um, right. where maybe like if you decide to reach out to him, maybe create a separate email address or whatever you right. feel like you need to do to protect your space and your peace. If he does have this history of kind of going over the top and reaching out to you, like create a, a separate email address, reach out, um, maybe meet up at like a public, you know, coffee shop, just right. something that feel you feel like you are in a little bit of control of that environment. If you're unsure of how he'll react and respond. Um, mm -hmm. If you do decide to reach out, if you don't, if you decide not to, there is a lot of grief that can come. Yeah. It is like stages of grief. It's yeah. grieving somebody who's no longer in your life anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really tough. And it sounds like you're kind of going through that right now, which is what's bringing up the feelings of maybe wanting to reach out. But at least you'd have some closure on, I tried, I gave it a shot. If he reacts well for a while, maybe you do get another year or two right. and he maybe goes off the deep end again. You know, we can't predict his behavior and you can choose to accept that, like mom was saying. Yeah. You can choose to accept that or if you feel like it's too much or he really is taking things to a intense level, 
then you can back off again yeah. and at least feel like at peace about those decisions. Like I tried. Yeah. And this yeah. is how it worked out. Well, I think at the end of the day, when any any of these relationships it comes down to is the outcome worth the effort. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in some situations it may be, and others it may not. And in those situations you either have to decide do you cut them off completely or do you change the effort? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like if I'm if I'm getting this tiny little bit of outcome, right. but I'm putting in all this effort, well, what if I just put in less effort? I'll put in less. Yeah. 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 And then and then maybe there's an equal amount there where right. you don't actually cut them off. Uh, but, but they exist yeah, in a subsistence relationship exactly. kind of way. Well, no, I really agree. With I wonder too, points. like mom, when you look at your kids growing up, like did you see them them differently at nineteen, twenty five, or six, right. and then thirty three? Like, did that look different, or do they always just feel like your kid? She's fishing for compliments. Yeah. I really am well. I like a child? <laughs> yeah. I, child-like? I mean, I'm really mature, right, mom? <laughs> She really is. No, but I mean, like, we wouldn't know that. Like, I don't know yeah. what, looking at it, your adult child. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. definitely and, different. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The the growth, you see the maturity at, you know, every five, ten years. Mm-hmm. You go, wow, they've really stepped up. Yeah. Or not. Know. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't thoughts. about me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it kind of was. <laughs> you know. Since you're here, I actually have another question oh, on no. this. No, no, I'm not. Uh, this is very okay. every t- subject time related. I hear that. I, I feel like in our culture, we've talked about, and I've mentioned it, that there is this trigger happy block all the everybody's in your life, and a lot of the nuance gets lost. And my favorite answer so far is a combination of both of you, Nick and Whitney. I wish this was on videos. Go on. Um, you're doing so good, Whitney. <laughs> Thanks. Just in front of your mom, gold, I love gold that stars. Podcast. Yeah, <laughs> this is such a great podcast. It's, we still got 90 minutes. Sure. Hang in there. It's going to get worse. No, but like, I I like that both of you are advocating for nuance and this concept that it doesn't have to be this black and white thing that you can, the relationship can scrape its knees and we can get back up again, that there can be seasons of, I need some space from you without necessarily having to lock the vault. But I'm, I'm really curious, and Kathy, you might not be able to even speak to this, but if one of your children closed you out of their life forever, you know, you said something, they were hurt by it. They said, mom, I've told you 25 times not to talk like that. Peter's the man I love. Stop telling me to leave him for podcast hosts, you know, who are not Ninja. aggressively handsome and maybe have a bad mustache, you know, just other things, hypotheticals. But like if she said, you know, I'm sick and tired of you butting into my life. I, I've told you so many times. That's it. Don't ever call me again. It'd you're, be heartbreaking. You're I mean, heartbreaking. it's impossible to imagine losing. I mean, you're, it's like your child's dead. Yes. You know, and you'd probably stalk her online and I sadly would. discover her podcast and be very disappointed. <laughs> I would show up on her doorstep. Then she'd listen every but, week. But you, would. <laughs> you, you probably would. You'd probably get in a plane and fly here. And, and I'm not leaving. I am your mother. I brought a sleeping bag. I'm sleeping on your porch. <laughs> right. 115? Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe I'd wait till October. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want you smart. back in better weather. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be November. there. <laughs> it would be devastating, it sounds like. It would. Yeah. It's hard to imagine how you respond to that if you're that parent. It would feel like a death. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And you know, that's that's what I think about too is, you know, like I my kids are 14 and, and 9, but I, like I love them to pieces, right? And mm-hmm. like obviously they're little kids to me right now, but I, I imagine wanting to be in their life forever. That's a big part of the relationship. I want to be there when they get married and when they have kids. I want to hold my grandkids. I when wanna... do you think your kids will cut you off? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, And that's why I'm advocating on There's this show now in case future them are listening. Give dad another shot. Okay, writer wants to give his dad another shot. Give dad another shot. I mean, we don't know all the details in writer's, in writer's life. We know more details in your life. I'm just saying, daddy's very hurt, and I miss you. I really want to be part of your life. I will work hard to make it better. Good luck, writer. Uh, let us know what you decide or, or what develops with this, but... You know, I really hope that there's room maybe for a gray area. And for a lot of the people out there, this is a tough one because there's a lot of folks that are like, whoa, you guys don't sound like you're advocating for, you know, me blocking my people. You don't know what they did to me. We don't. And and that's why I really but I do think it's a very important, nuanced decision. I really want people to be very slow with the decision to nuke the relationship because it is devastating to the other party. It is like death. And I don't want it to be taken lightly. But I also think it's okay to have boundaries. But to me, boundaries are fences, not walls. They show you the perimeter of where I exist and where you exist and mm-hmm. how we relate to each other. A boundary that's a wall is I can't see you, you don't exist to me. Those, I think, need to be reserved for very unusual situations. And those do happen, such situations yeah. exist. Yeah. 
I wanted but, to make that clear. Too. Yeah. yeah. Like it is valid. Yeah. Sometimes we're not saying. Everyone. Yeah. It's yeah. a tool yeah. in the toolkit. Yeah. But I think it ought to be more rare than we're seeing it these days. And I think that there's a lot of times that I hear about it and I go, huh. So you ended your forever relationship with that person because they didn't like the salad at your wedding, you know, or like, so it's like, okay, I would rather therapy that with you for a while. Yeah. Right. And talk about how you can punish this person or put them on, you know, put them in the doghouse in your relationship, but not make these. And this is something Nick you used to talk about in the past, it's been a few years since you've used the example, but we used to talk about boundaries versus ultimatums. And we've talked about that in addictions work, especially, but the danger of ultimatums that they're just not effective and then people eventually fail them, and now you have to follow through, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like, look, if you ever, you know, Kathy, that's it. If you ever naysay Peter again, and then she's like, God, Peter sucks at cooking. And you're like, that's it. You're dead to me. And it's like, shit, you shouldn't have given her an ultimatum. Like, you should have, <laughs> yeah. like, let's create a procedural approach. Like, you know, mom, again, he's the man I married. He sucks at cooking. It is what it is. Yeah. Got to accept Love this. him anyway. <laughs> Patreon.com slash therapy. Find out what Peter did wrong. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about boundaries as a oh. cisgendered person. You're listening to Pod Therapy! Today's episode is brought to you by Smitty Scoop, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, Mason Miller, Tess Miller, Byler T, Paris, Team Monaco, Oscar Swanros, Anna Marie, and Emma Kane. And if you would like to sponsor the show, become a Patreon supporter at uh, patreon.com slash therapy and sign up to become a therapy producer and you get to hear your name at times like this. So Kathy, in between the questions, we do trivia breaks oh and we God. all compete against each other to see who wins. Super we fun. Do. Yeah. And It's also rigged. I lose yeah, all of good. it. Yes. Yeah. You won like two weeks ago. Thank you, Jacob. It is uh, true, Kathy, I did. Uh, I don't like to brag. I'm a very humble here, person. You did win I wasn't one. here, so yeah. I don't know if it actually happened. You could listen no, to the tape. I refuse. <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> Honestly, that's we got, the right uh, we, we're, we're keeping with our uh, trivia from Emma. Okay, okay. yeah, Emma some, wrote on the Discord that trivia. they're not all horse-related. Yeah, it turns out they're not. <laughs> um, 30 horse. <laughs> there yeah. were four pages, and Nick was like, I no. can't do this much horse trivia. There's 30 pages, Jim. There's <laughs> 30 pages. Emma, come on. <laughs> That's a season. We do have some, uh, at some point we're going to break it up. We got some uh, Tour de France Ooh. Uh, questions that came in as well. I don't know anything about that. I got to brush up. All yeah. right. Which Italian fashion house has a long history of creating equestrian inspired clothing Ooh. and accessories? Two points on the fly. One point multiple choice. Gucci. Would, damn it. I want Gucci too. Dang. Okay. Uh, uh Fine, Gucci. <laughs> We're all going. Any guys? Versace. Like, I don't Ooh, know. Versace you can also wait good. for suggestions. Oh yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, if you, want, you, you get one yeah. point if you, you want to wait. Yeah, take the high road. Okay. Wait yeah, for the wait suggestions because we all probably whiffed it. Yeah. A Gucci. Oh, come on, be there, Gucci. <laughs> B Prada. Ooh. C Versace. Oh, oh shit. Okay, Mom. D Dolce Dolce and Gabbana. Ooh. Mm. What do you want, Kathy? Gonna stick with your instinct. I mean, Versace is a strong choice. Third. <laughs> uh, third take, she'll take the third one next. Versace. There All right. it is. With the okay, heck? well, I'm, I'm going to go with Gucci. All right. Okay. It is Gucci. Yay! All right. Yay! You're terrible at this, Kathy. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I <laughs> am. We just dumped on you. <laughs> I don't like trivia. <laughs> You're dead last. I know. It's fun. But Nick, you only got one point because you waited for the, I did. the options. Yeah. All, right. All right. Okay, which high-end fashion brand known for its equestrian roots sponsors the Bergley Horse Trails. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to wait for answers. Yeah, I on need this answers. One. Yeah, I no definitely way. know what the Bergley Horse Trails are. But really? Yeah, I mean, we all do. Yeah, we, we all, all do. do. I just want to make it clear boy. that I definitely yes. know what yeah. that is. I have <laughs> tickets. <laughs> Jacob has weird horse knowledge, and I'm here yeah. for it. <laughs> uh, okay. Ralph Lauren. Ooh. Ooh. Burberry. Hmm. Er, is it Hermes? Hermes. Hermes? Mm hmm. Hermes. Hermes. Bar- Sorry. Barbour? Bar- Burberry? No? Did you already say Burberry? Bonanza. Burberry. I already said Burberry. Oh, that was yeah. B. Oh. B-A-R-B-O-U-R. Barbour. Barbour. It's that cartoon Barbour. elephant. Yeah, that's what it is. Barbour. 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 Yeah. yeah. All right. Read the question again. Oh, wait. I was Which high end fashion brand known for its equestrian roots sponsors the Burberry horse trails? Yeah, I want oh. the Barbar thing. Burberry. Polo. Burberry. I mean, I'll take Burberry. Ralph Lauren. Ralph. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Ralph Lauren. I'm Ralph. Yeah, right. Ralph. Kathy, what do you want? Ralph. Ralph. Mm-hmm. All right. Be Ralph. there, Barber. Burberry. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Wait, did I get it or did oh. he get it? I got oh, it. You had it. <laughs> ah, three points on Jacob. The rest of us got smoked. Yeah. yeah. Three so to two down, to Joe, one to zero. <laughs> we'll uh, 
I'll we'll, come back. We'll, we'll come back with the As soon as we talk about how to auction these horses off, I've got it. <laughs> that, that'll be me. That's Price is right. That's where I'm good at. All right. We'll go back to questions. We'll come back. Copy that. Later. Next question. Boundaries as a cisgendered person from our buddy, Anthony Camarada. Hello, Whitney, Nick, audio guy, Jacob, PhD, and Mr. Ooh. Jim. <laughs> Fuck you, Anthony. <laughs> every single question takes a shot, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I have a very complex question that has been a subject of conflict between me and my best friend. I was on vacation with a friend who recently came out as trans. I love and support my friend and felt honored that I was the first person they came out to. The problem arose when I told them that I enjoy going to shows at local LGBT bars and supporting artists in that community who perform there. This horrified my friend, and they told me, that being a cis straight male invading that safe space that is for members of the community was wrong, and I could be seen as a possible threat taking up space in an area that I have no right to be in, because as a cis straight male, I don't need to worry about safety going to regular bars to hang out. I was taken aback by this because I go to, for example, a drag show with my fiance. We do our best not to draw attention to ourselves and are just supporting local artists who just so happen to perform in a space that is designated for lack of better work uh, for people who identify as something other than sister straight. I am a supporter and an ally. I've never had any problems in the past when going out to those spaces and I'm writing in to get another opinion from all of you and the friendly folks on Discord, of course. My friend said if we were to continue to want to inhabit those spaces, that they would have to be there with us, or it would be inappropriate. I guess my question is, am I in the wrong? Is there a better way for me to show support and be an ally? Thank you in advance, and look forward to discussing this question on the Discord with everybody. Anthony Camarada, pronouns are he and him. Does Anthony say where where he is? I don't think that we got a location on that one. I'm good not question, sure. Though. Yeah, I think that matters a great deal. I think it matters a lot. Yeah, that's a really good point. Where he is? Yeah, geographically, like oh, left, the call right. Call is coming from up, inside the down. house, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. under, over. No, like what? Yeah, if what you mean? my okay, take us. I, I, I'm going to tell you my whole journey. There we Show go. Us Listen to this question. Let's do it. A Listen journey. to this question. I had a whole I had a whole journey in my head. Uh, my first journey was uh, your friend is an asshole, right? And uh, you you are certainly welcome to go to to these clubs and these events. The more I thought about it, mm-hmm. the more I got into if you were in an area where uh, people who have uh, uh, for for lack of a better word these lifestyles, mm-hmm. uh, where where they are less safe yeah. than other areas. Um, uh, you know, I, I grew up in the deep South. Uh, there was clan activity. There was all this stuff. Right. Uh, I went to gay bars all the time when I was, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I went to gay bars all the time. Uh, and I was fully aware even back then that the people in, in these bars and, and myself, uh, we were in, uh, some, some degree of danger. Right. From Stonewall. From, I mean, there, was like there, a lot there were people, there were people in the, in the surrounding, uh, areas that would not be happy with yeah. us being in these bars at, at, at night and, and having a good time and, and celebrating uh, people and diversity and, and culture and, and right. everything else. Um, so I guess from that point of view, I can get it a little bit. Yeah. I still, I, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. Right. I don't think you're doing a single thing wrong by going and uh, like I, Honestly, I don't even care if you're there to support. If you're there having a good time right. and not harshing anybody else's mellow while you're there, I don't think you do anything wrong at all. If you're if you're sitting over in the corner going like, man, I hate all these people. Right. Like, as long as you're not bothering yeah. them. Pay long, full price and tip. Yeah, as, long, as yeah. long as you're not, you know, letting them know that you hate them. And like, right. At some point, you yeah. kind of go like, ah, like you're not doing any harm. Well, and there's more than a few Republican senators at that drag show <laughs> putting money on the table going, fuck these guys, yeah. I'm going to vote against them. All of them. And then they keep putting money on the table. I mean, well, <laughs> I'll be back next week to tell them how I hate them again. Is the Louisiana <laughs> governor that just signed the Ten Commandments in the school, is his name Kennedy? Yeah, is that right? That feels right. Uh, <laughs> the last time I saw him, this is real, was a couple of months ago in Vegas at a uh, very specific, very raunchy show. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's the only time I've ever seen him in person. Uh, but, oh, okay. but that's where he was a few months ago. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think you're doing anything wrong by this. I, I think your friend does have a a kernel of a point in yeah. there that eh, maybe they don't. I don't know. <laughs> I can I, see I, the I, argument. I'm really conflicted on it. I can I, see I, the yeah. argument. Yeah. I, I feel like to kind of piggyback off what Jacob's saying is somewhere like a gay bar or where there's a drag show, mm-hmm. uh, and this is my opinion, is that that is a space where people are expressing themselves. And like Jacob said, if you are a ally and a safe person, in my opinion, you are welcome there. Mm. If there is an event that is curated for, uh, I'm going to use the word queer here to sure. describe this, but for people who are queer to gather together to um, almost like a queer event. Like, yeah. hey, this is purposely for us to gather together right. to discuss to whatever i think that's different if you show up as like a cis hetero yeah. male and are like i want to be here too unless somebody explicitly invited you as their support person right. or like a support group or something like that i think something that is described and those are not going to be like a gay bar that's right different man i'm I, I, I am so hesitant to say though that it's okay to exclude people yeah, yeah. for you know I, I don't know how to say this where it sounds less ridiculous than this. You're being excluded based on your sexuality. Yeah. Right. And that's weird. There's mm-hmm. stuff. I think we can all agree there's an irony to it. I think we're also all struggling with the fact that we realize this population, as you were just sharing, Jacob, has a very real reality that we just don't experience. Agreed. And there is a very serious sense of safety And needing a safe place where they can assume that every person there shares this identity with them and that 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 should be an assumption they can walk into sometimes and that that's not wrong either to to want that. But I I think we all and I like Whitney, your point about there's a difference between outward facing things and inward facing things. I was I don't think you could use that word either, though. No, you shouldn't use the N word. Oh, thanks. (laughs) Yeah. 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 There it is. I was like, what? <laughs> there it is. That one took me a second. <laughs> oh, that just made Jim so sad right yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> and just, how do we delete that? I guess is where I'm at. So like, I was reminded of like Alcoholics Anonymous. So like AA yes. has a, a menu of, of meetings, but they always indicate this is an open or closed. Mm. And so open really is, you don't have to identify as an alcoholic to be there. So you can be a friend. You can be, you know, just a, whatever. Like you can just be a student who's doing mm-hmm. a research paper. You're welcome to come. But then there are closed meetings where you are violating the integrity of that meeting by showing up and not identifying as one of us. Interesting. And and that's the deal. And like now what we're happens you to show if respect. if I show up at that meeting, if I show up at a closed AA meeting and say I don't want to talk, yeah. I, I want to sit in this chair over here by the coffee maker, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out. I'm gonna observe. Yeah. You, uh, I mean, you didn't bother anybody, so nobody would know. Right. right. No, of course, of course. Yeah. But but I mean, what would w- would someone? ask me to leave at that point? Would someone come to me and kind of inquire what was going on? Most likely, absolutely nothing would happen. Yeah. Okay. But but in the real world, there could be a context where here we are in our circle and we're sharing, and then you tell a story of going out with your boys and having some great drinks and mm-hmm. you had some whiskey, and then you go, oh, by the way, I'm not an alcoholic, uh, so just nobody needs to worry about me relapsing or anything like that. Well, this is not well, the that right would place. just be a weird thing That's to do. That's just a fucking weird thing <laughs> yeah. to do. But like, yeah, so I'm trying to take it to an extreme of yeah. like, and I could see a similar extreme for somebody that says, when I'm here, I want to be around my people with our shared sure. living experience. And if you're trying to, you know, be friendly with us and you don't come from that experience, I can see the argument that there could be what are called closed spaces. In I'm, also, facing. I'm also curious about age of, of everyone involved here. Yeah. If, 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 because this feels like. A, a younger person. I think it is. Who yeah. is who is saying, like, you, you can't come into this space. You're you're right. not part of this. You can't come into this. Right. I yeah. don't know. And it's also a very new journey for that That's friend. what I was going to say. Yeah. I want to take yeah. away from your friend's I, feelings. No, no, but I don't like, either. But I do think... Because they, and they do bring up valid points. Correct. Right. They certainly yeah. do. Yeah. But in the beginning, you're kind of feeling that out, and that would feel scary or intimidating, maybe if you were in a space where you assumed everyone else had a shared experience which you should not assume that i think in a bar people can be any sexuality like you said how how does anyone know that you sitting in the corner even if you are a male and have a girlfriend sitting there next Mm -hmm. to a girl sitting next to you like how would you know 
what those people's sexuality right. is. And yeah. if you are an ally, you're presumably not like causing a ruckus or like, right, right. you know, yelling slurs yeah, at people. because you'll get thrown like, out of the bar. So it's weird to me. If you're an asshole in a bar, you're being an asshole in a bar. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. weird to me that your friend who felt comfortable enough to come out to mm. you is also saying like you would make others uncomfortable. That's kind of a weird To me, it tells me there. more about the friend. I, I think Anthony's probably a very safe person. Obviously, yeah. friend felt safe coming out to Anthony. It tells me a lot about friend going through their own fear. And, and probably just what we're learning is really that friend desperately needs a safe space. Yeah. Yeah. And friend is still very much struggling with how safe I feel telling anybody this. And probably does look at those bars mm. as like, okay, that's like the one place I've been that's able to hide spot. and be mm. me. And yeah. it, it horrifies me that you would show up, a person who I wasn't ready to talk to, yeah. and that you would invade that space that I would think is safe. Yeah. I do From that angle, I could see it. When I was in high school, I was probably like a sophomore or so, maybe sophomore or junior in high school. I had a weird childhood. Yeah. Uh, so I, I grew like up in it. Louisiana. Like, Come on. So I, so well, I was, was going to say, yeah, that's, that's kind of... Yeah. 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 <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, was at a, I was at a gay bar. Uh, one night, uh, you know, sophomore, junior in high school, we're hanging out there after after a show or something like that. We're we're there at night, um, and I saw a classmate of mine in the bar, mm-hmm. and I, I waved at them. Uh, I man, this has been so fucking long ago. I think it I think it was a female classmate. I mm-hmm. think I think uh, that, that she was female. Um, so I waved at her. Yeah, no, she it, it was yeah. Uh, I waved at her and said like hello to her. And she just looked alarmed. Right. Uh, because she was not out. Right. Uh, it didn't occur to me that this was, you know, it didn't occur to, you know, 14, 15 year old me that this was a problem. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, they're like, oh, I, I'm here. You're here. We're both having a good time. What what, would, what could the problem possibly be? Right. And then the next day in, in school, you know, I see her in the halls. And she won't look at me, oh, and and I yeah. kind of go over to her and hey, how you doing? And she yeah. avoids me and everything else. I'm like, oh, this is Uh-oh. this is a thing on that end. And now yeah. she's worried that I'm going to say something to someone, or I'm I'm going to out her and all right. this stuff. That's a good point. Uh, so I mean, there is yeah. there is there are things like that to be considered. I, I guess that's fair. Um, there's also uh, I I wonder if your friend has thoughts of you. Kind of laughing at drag queens mm. instead of you know. It, I mean, you go That's to a drag a show, point. you could certainly laugh. Like, there's comedy, there, there's things yeah. to laugh. Uh, to, you know, everyone's laughing there, yeah. and you're laughing Some of with it's everyone. Intentionally over the top yeah. as part of the thing. But it, yeah. it, you know, it, it, the assumption could be that you're going and making fun of people. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm curious. I, I have follow up questions for your friend. The sensitivity doesn't makes it come sense. out to more of a acceptance. Mm. I mean. You want to be accepted for right. whoever you are, straight right. or not. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to decide who's going to. And if you're going to you. come out, you're going to come out to someone you're comfortable with. So right. you think you're going to be accepted. Yeah. 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 yeah this, the, it's, it's such a delicate issue. It really is. And I think that it's so important that your friend told you, look, for what it's worth, I'm not comfortable. I know. What do you and do like, with that? Okay. You've got to download that data. Yeah. You know, because how important, like, if this is one of my central relationships and I want to take that feedback, if I have other, you know, friendships that I could talk to and, mm-hmm. you know, hey, one of my friends told me they were uncomfortable with this. Can I get your take? Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, I think that then you can start averaging those data points together and figure out in our community, what's the vibe? Because your community may be like, look, we're scared as hell. Like Orlando yeah. had that uh, shooting in a gay mm-hmm. club. The pulse, yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. pulse. And it's like, okay, maybe that community. And I think that Jacob's point yeah. about where you are is very relevant. Yeah. In Vegas, we are the tourism capital of the yeah. world. Yeah. Like, yeah, we have tons of bars and clubs mm-hmm. and all sorts of varieties and flavors and shows. And like, we have an totally area in town that Whitney should take her mom to called the Fruit Loop. Let's yes. go. It's awesome. Do the Fruit Loop. It's just a bunch of gay bars. And it's tomorrow. Great. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's totally normal to walk in and out of all those places. And I don't even think any of us, like, if you saw your buddy at one of those bars, you wouldn't go, oh, I didn't know that guy was gay. You'd just be like, hey, man, you like this place too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these, yeah. These cocktails yeah. Those are fucking great. Totally. I do think at some point. Uh, so, I guess I have two answers for you. Uh, first of all, you're you can absolutely go to these bars. You can absolutely go hang out in these. You're not doing anything wrong by going there. Yeah. That being said, your relationship with your friend is a different thing. Yeah. You can yeah. be right. Yeah. Or you can be happy. Yeah. Good point. Mm-hmm. I mean, at some point, you you have to kind of sit down and, and decide like, 
what is more important to me is, is being right and knowing that I can go to these bars and go to these shows and everything else and, and be happy and, and like, it's awesome, but it's bothering my friend. Yeah. So you got, at some point you're just going to have to sit down with your friend and have this conversation with them. Yeah. Well, or I would say just uh, like validate them that they would feel uncomfortable in that situation. And maybe it doesn't mean just like Jacob said, it doesn't mean you're, in the wrong for going. I agree. I don't think you're in the wrong for going to those spaces, but your friend is feeling that. And so validating them and sitting with them kind of through that. Mm. I can imagine your friend, if they are new to, uh, you know, coming out in this lifestyle and they're still working through that there, there will be a time where I would imagine they will like lighten up or, you know, adjust. They may not, but I mean, I was, I was at a party just a couple of weeks ago at a, at the, at the home of someone who is a a drag star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They they were on RuPaul's drag race and and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and it was a lot of drag Queens there, a lot of people in the queer community there. Mm -hmm. There's no question of like, like the same way I wouldn't ask someone you know, at this party, you know, what is your sexuality? What are you like uh, any of these things? Like, there's no question of anybody coming up to me and going like, Oh, who are you? What are you like? How right. are you involved in the, in the world? How are yeah. you involved? You're in not going to get ID. Yeah. Like yeah. There's, there's not going to be that rundown. There's not yeah. going to be any of this. Uh, I, yeah. I, but that is also a Vegas thing. I mean, I don't know how it would be in another place. Eh, maybe because like, I think about comparison that might be, you know, appropriate, is think about like civil rights in the black community. Yeah. And like there were historic black colleges. You think about like Howard. And there's, yeah. you know, in the beginning, there were probably times where there were white kids that were like, no, 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 I'm, you, I'm, I'm on the level. We're cool. You know, like mm-hmm. I, I would march with you. I want to be here to support you. And they might be like, hey, man, thank you. And there's mm-hmm. totally times and places where we want you at the event and we need your mm-hmm. support. This is not for you, though. Yeah. This space is for us. Yeah. And there needs to be safe spaces that are just for us. Yeah. And and you're really not welcome. And it's not that we don't like you. It's not that you're not good enough. It's that the, it's just we need that. And, yeah. and I think there's an argument to be made for that. It's very hard to know where those spaces specifically are. Because bars thrive on capitalism and commerce. And if you ask the bar owner, who do you want to come here and spend money? They'd say, not assholes and good tippers. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm looking for. Don't yeah. don't harsh the vibe. Make this a safe place. If you're a dick, we'll throw you out. Spend well. Come, come be fun. I mean, honestly, though, even the race thing isn't, a ver- isn't very analogous. Yeah. Because, like, if, if there is a historically black college, like you used Howard University right. as an example, if you show up there, it's obvious. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, like it's right. just you being there, we can see, you know. Yeah. There's no um, hiding it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um yeah, you know, whereas I think, you know, kind of to Jacob's earlier point, is like if you're there and you're not causing a problem and you're not, you know, out there just saying, right. Hey, I'm not one of you, right, but yeah. I support you. Yeah. Right, yeah. If you're not doing that, if you're not wearing a t shirt think... that says it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and, and Steve. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Yeah, some bullshit. Yeah, if you're not being an asshole, yeah. I don't think most people are even gonna realize. I agree with yeah. all that, but what if your friend finds out you went after they told you this is oh, horrific. Yes. I think yeah. well, that's oh, okay. a, no, it's two okay. different problems. Different yeah. It's two okay. different problems. Like okay. that's what I was saying. It's like you, you have that's the issue of can I go to these events with a clear conscience? I think yeah. the answer to that is yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you have to have a, a conversation I mean, it's okay with, with your us. friends. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, yeah. I think it's okay. Your pop <laughs> therapy friends are fine with it. <laughs> All of us other cis uh, oh, heteros work. Yeah. I have, we're I have a PhD. It. I'm fine with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> PH Dr. Jacob. Yeah. That's right. So. Yeah. I think, you, yeah, I think you I think you got to have a, chi- a chat with your friend and, and kind of get to the bottom of what it is about it that bothers them. Uh, you know, what about you going to these places that bothers your friend? Right. Uh, you know, maybe they're concerned for you. Maybe they're con- like, maybe, yeah. maybe they have concerns that you haven't thought of. Um, so, you know, I mean, depending on how close you are with this person, it, it, just, it sounds like you're pretty fucking close with them. Yeah. So, I mean, ha- maybe sit down and, you know, call them up and say, you know, you, you said this to me the other day. It's really been on my mind a lot. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to sit down. Like, let's, let's go sit down and have some coffee and and kind of hash this out. I could see because that. you know I I want to continue on living my life the way that I that I like living it. I'm I'm having a really good time going to going yeah. to these venues and seeing these shows and hanging out. And I, I you know these are these are friends of mine. Um, but I also don't want it to to upset you. Yeah. So so let's sit down and and just chat about it. I like that. I think that's probably I like your point, Jacob. That there are two separate questions being asked here, and they don't have to have the same answer. Yeah. I think that that's a really good point. Yeah, I like that a lot. 
Um, quick anecdote about the Adam and Eve thing. Did you see the video of the woman who no. thought there's an Adam and Eve store and she thought it was a Bible store? No. <laughs> oh, great. Oh. No. Yeah. And so, oh, because the Adam and Eve is yeah, in a sex It just says shop. Adam and Eve in like cursive <laughs> on the store. And so the daughter, she was like, oh, I want to stop by that Bible store. I saw over by this. And she's like, what? what right off the freeway. She's like, oh, you know, the Christian bookstore is called Adam and Eve. And, and the daughter's like, yes. Yes, we will. Yes. And just like taped the whole thing. <gasps> yeah. And it's great. Send oh, it to like, the text group Mom later. goes walking toward the door and like opens the door and then like sees somebody coming out and so like steps out to like help open the door and the person's just carrying dildos. Good. <laughs> like, and it's just the best moment ever. And the mom like doesn't fully register and is like, huh. And then just like keeps going in the store. And the daughter's just loving it. <laughs> Cross shaped dildos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh yes. Would you like your daughter to take you to a sex shop while you're in Las Vegas? There's many. You were supposed from. to show them my video. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I might learn something. Yeah. <laughs> There's always more to learn. There's a great one across from the Orleans. It's a it's a sex shop in the front. They've got like all all the sex toys and everything. And then in it's the like back, a movie theater. Like, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They've got they've got, the, they've got that. Oh, God. And then you go out the front door and you go to the to the shop right behind them, and it's all BDSM stuff. There you oh, go. Yes, yeah, so you can wow. hit two, you hit two of them in one parking lot yeah. there. We will. Oh, like, what is this then? for? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you fly in with, Kathy? Because depending upon the luggage rules, we might have to get you an extra bag. She checked check a bag. Okay. Yeah. Southwest, Southwest. Oh, she does good. Not you get fly the free spirit. bags. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so you, you can get a second bag even. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. many dildos they sell can we luggage fit in there? Yeah. <laughs> Honey, look what I brought home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, your, ba- your luggage is vibrating. <laughs> I'm right, it is. I have is there a lawnmower in there? I have eight leather dog masks in that bag. Sure. Dog masks. Oh, God. <laughs> we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're talking about Inside Out 2 and anxiety. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Some of those hit dildos will turn you inside out, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh damn. Oh, right. Have a bloody Today's sock. This episode is brought to you by Robert Browdy Jr. Mentz, Kayla Lansbury, Kevin Chamberlain, Ben Stanley, Adam Hathaway. I'm reading the long, wrong list. Good job. <laughs> Smitty Scoop, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, Mason Miller, Tess Miller, Byler T, Paris T, Monaco, Oscar Swanros, Hannah Marie, and Emma Kane. Yeah, and all those you other people too, though. Yeah. would like to sponsor the show, become a therapy producer at patreon.com slash therapy. Or if you have opinions about the questions, patreon.com slash therapy, jump in for a buck, join the Discord that Anthony was talking about. There you go. Yeah. And sound off. Let's hear your opinions. I'm so curious. I know. This is a great one mm-hmm. to see. I'm excited for this episode. Oh, right. my God. All right. Emma. So we should review the Emma scores. <laughs> uh, right now, Jacob's in the lead, uh, I believe, with a three. Three. And uh, uh-huh. we're tied at two, two, Whitney. Nick has one, and Kathy's and coming in last one. place with a donut. Oh, uh, Kathy, no, we have got... a question for you from Slurpee Kay oh, Motherfucker in the Discord. Uh, was Jacob as tender and a t- as attentive a lover as you had hoped he would be? <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Kathy. Uh, it's, it's just doubt. a yes or no. Look him yeah. in the eyes when he answers. <laughs> He likes that. <laughs> it's mustaches. Oh! oh there you go. The mustache. Now, yeah. 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 This is how it goes down in pop therapy. We seduce moms. Oh, my God. Our whole side thing. A new hashtag. <laughs> Until now, it's just been Jim's mom. It's just me. Yeah, my mom's just been getting passed around for seven years. Finally, have another mom in the mix. Around, there's only two other Let people. Let the record show Jim said that. She knows what she is. All right, Nick, what do we got? All right, I got a beef to pick with Emma here. Oh, um, take an issue, huh? Yeah, because she knows I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of this. Yeah. <laughs> the Spanish Riding School in Vienna is famous for its performance featuring which breed of horse? And now I have to uh, oh, uh, horse pronounce breeds. all these horse breeds. You I'm going options. to wait for those options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take options. Yeah. Holstein, final answer. Mm. <laughs> That's not a mm. Yeah. No. <laughs> they do That's a good... cow joke for oh, yeah, all you yeah. folks. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Non-cow. Wow. Holstein's does make a good chocolate people. shake, though. Way oh, over my yeah, head. it does. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I think they're closed. No. no I think they're, there's a restaurant used to be in the Cosmopolitan. I think I don't think it's there anymore. Like when? I, I don't was know. there like last year, I oh, think. Oh, then maybe okay. it's still there. All right. Sorry, go on. No, I no, you're, you're good. Good. I'm, I'm fine I not reading these because this is just going to be embarrassing. You can skip that question. Right? No, 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 no. Oh. I'm okay. right now. Yeah. Andalusian, uh-huh. I believe. That feels okay. Right. Okay. Lipizanar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's a weight loss drug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucentano. Uh. And Hanoverian. All right. Well, I think we're all shooting in the dark. I'm gonna on this go one. A because yeah, that one did sound not? fun. I'm yeah. gonna go B because yeah. it's after A. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm taking D. 
Uh, I'm the D. Thinking B. Okay. All right, also going B. I'm going A because I'm pretty sure that's the right answer. Wow. Oh, oh, yay, I might have a shot. It is B. Oh, oh. oh mom's coming back. Kurt, Kathy's mom on the board. Woo. <laughs> nice. Okay, which breed of horse is known for its strength and size oh, is oh. often associated with pulling beer wagons and famous Ooh, Clydesdale. 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 It is a yeah. Clydesdale. Fun fact. Yes. Uh, Brit, Iowa... Not just known for HoboCon. All right, time out, time out, Nick. Time out, Nick. Uh, everybody, we're taking a poll real quick. Now, you know it's a fact about Brit, Iowa. Will this, in fact, be a fun fact uh-huh. or just a fact about Iowa? I'm going to go <laughs> all the way to barely even a fact. Probably disputable <laughs> rumor. <laughs> lore. It's just yeah, lore. Brit lore. That's right. <laughs> Iowa Not lore. just known for HoboCon. Go way on. to resume that point. It is also the Draft Horse Show. They uh, do the draft horse. Wow. Show. What's oh. a draft horse? They're big Clydes- fucking horses. Oh, okay. I was like, there what's you go. A draft? Yeah, and so they'll have like the top oh, a show. Okay. Yeah, like it's and the so, horses like, that the you top... never see in the bestiality videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the ones never. you look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just it's just unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a vanilla <laughs> horse porn guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, not into that upper limit stuff. I just, <laughs> that only lasts for so long. <laughs> yeah, once you get bit, <laughs> once you got the bug, once you get that horse bite, you you, once you build going. up a tolerance, you gotta oh, keep going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Ed's where I got started. <laughs> so, you feed him one Ed. carrot. And That's this, it. this is why my mom will not come on this show. <laughs> Come on, Nick. Your mom won't uh, come on what? Oh, oh, that's all. Awesome. That's all we go live on Twitch. You save that for the finale. No, the top like sixteen teams, uh, draft horse teams in the nation. Okay, come to Brit, Iowa. Wow. They do the draft horse show. That's really huh. cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, so we're all on Clydesdales. Fun. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. We're getting points okay. on that. Cash them in. Yes, and we all got that. Yeah, yeah. two points for everyone. Yes. Oh, there's only one left in this category. Let's go ahead and knock Thank this out. Right, God. Which horse breed developed in the United States is known for its versatility and is often used with both Western and English riding disciplines? Oh. I know this one. I need options. I want to say an answer, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm say, so convinced it's wrong. I'm going to say quarter horse. Oh. oh. All right. Yeah, they use those for training and stuff, yeah. I think. I want to say, hmm. okay, I'm not, I'm not actually giving an answer. Let me start there, because I don't want to get locked in on this. Sure, talking a lot for somebody who's not answered the fucking question. <laughs> I, I think Mustang, but then I feel like that's... <laughs> Polly Mustang. No, no. I know it's a horse, goddammit. I know it's a horse. Shut I just don't know what... Sure it's I don't know if it's like a boy horse. Like, maybe just all boy horses are called Mustangs. No. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to say it because I don't know if it's like a breed Where's or if it's just like stream? boy horses or mustangs so dumb. Horse. and like girl horses or mustangs. Oh I don't know. God. Like no G. Okay, okay. Mares are the. I'll call? give you an extra half point. Can you confirm that a mustang is actually a horse? Oh well, yeah. There's or is a horse it just on a the... nickname for Sally. There's a <laughs> there's a horse on the the car. <laughs> So there's definitely a horse. On the Polly Mustang. Yeah, on the Polly Mustang. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sure that Polly just didn't have a favorite horse? And yeah. That's, that was just his Pretty logo? confident. Yeah. Okay. Is that yeah. a male or a Pretty. female? Oh. I, I think it's a boy. I think <laughs> it's a boy horse. How if many legs look, does it you, have? If you look closely at the logo. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can tell. He's hung. He's hung <laughs> like a car. Like a car. <laughs> if right. Mustang would just have a big old swinging horse dick hanging down to that logo. <laughs> if that I, was how we measured horsepower. How many horse dicks? Horse dicks of energy does this energy have? <laughs> like Ford, Ford stock would go through the roof if they oh, just yeah. added a horse dick. I'm gonna wait for options. Oh, yeah, okay. That's I too happen. shall be waiting for options. <laughs> no, I'm waiting. Yeah, you're going quarter. Horse. Uh, I am going quarter horse. Uh, Morgan, paint, quarter horse. <gasps> Morgan, saddlebred. Oh, okay. It's my I want favorite paint. thing to make a sandwich with. Paint sounds nice. Paint? No, saddlebred. Oh, mm, both good. Both good. I was going to say saddlebred. Mm. Morgan. I, I mean, right. I'll, I'll ride a, I'll ride a quarter horse with Nick here. I'll yeah, know what you're you guys the, are doing. You're in the <laughs> lead anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take my two points. It is a quarter horse. Oh, oh, nice. I'll wow. take my one point and keep my lead. Yeah. yeah. Just cruising through. <laughs> all right. So cool. Thank Jacob's you, still in the lead. Uh, Nick probably in second for all I know. <laughs> sure. Yes. Whitney and I are probably still tied and yeah, Karen's I'm on the board. Still, so. yeah. I'm not yeah, Karen. Kathy. Kathy. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> 
insight She's not a Karen. Karen. Yeah, I know. She's a, <laughs> How dare you? Can't call white women that. Inside <laughs> Out 2 and Anxiety from our pal Emma, who's also the author of our trivia this week. Thank you, Emma. Hey, everyone. The past two weeks, nearly every session, my clients have mentioned the movie Inside Out 2. Jim, you've seen this movie, right? I have. Whitney, yeah. you saw it too, right? No. You all haven't seen it yet? No. Oh, what? This yeah. is my Should answer. Should we go see it tomorrow? Jim question. <laughs> it's going to putt to victory. Um, and how they related to some specific scene, emotion, etc. It's been super helpful for many of them to language and bring into sessions what they've felt or experienced. It's also brought up a question I have for myself, too. When watching the movie, what struck me was the competitive drive, passion, motivation, and energy that the main character Riley had when anxiety was in control versus when emotions were working harmoniously. As I'm sure many of you now know from the Patreon interview and the Discord, I've been a competitive equestrian for most of my life. I, also, I always had an enormous drive and motivation. I would take advantage of every learning opportunity I could, rode every chance I got, and worked my ass off nonstop. Absolutely nothing could stop me. Even not being able to afford things just led to me getting creative, such as clearing other people's equipment, braiding horses at shows, etc., for any extra dollar I could get. When Riley, the main character of the movie, was up before everyone else practicing hockey and taking every opportunity she could, it reminded me of my teenage self. For a large portion of my teen years, heading into my early 20s, I worked full-time for a trainer who basically exploited my drive and anxiety, put me in really bad situations, working with dangerous horses, leaving me places on purpose, turning my, me against my parents, trying to run me over with her truck, wow. telling me things were my fault that I had that nothing to do with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once I made me sweep the floors, <laughs> tried to fucking kill me. me. <laughs> Jesus. And let's say things ended up causing a lot of trauma. I wanted nothing more than to be the best writer I could be, have her tell me I did a good job, and for her to be proud of me. This all led to a massive increase in anxiety and panic attacks. I worked seven days a week for her, 10 to 14 hours a day, while having an overloaded schedule for my bachelor's degree, which allowed me to graduate in three years. I was kicked out of her barn right after graduation when I started seeing my own therapist, understanding boundaries, and she basically couldn't get any more out of me, so I was not good enough for her. I was devastated and am still sad for that part of myself. I found a wonderful new barn and friends and have been happy there for about five years now as I finally made progress with my own anxiety and started to discover that instead of all my hard work paying off and becoming a better writer, she actually caused major damage to my writing as well as my physical and mental damage to both of the horses I had at the time. Everything seemed to change. I'd given absolutely everything I could and not only got nothing for it, the opposite of what I was wa working for happened. I was going to have to undo what she screwed up with my writing, plus relearn all that I learned wrong. The damage to one of my horses resulted in him being put down a few years ago, and the other, Tonka, the famous pod therapy horse, Whoop. will never be competitive in the sport I brought him in uh, for due to the damage she caused. He has found a new career path, which he loves, but that doesn't change what happened. I spent about three years finding no joy in my favorite thing in the world. Going to ride was a chore, and lessons and training were even worse. I'm in a better place now, and I'm back to everything that I love, but it was so different, and in some ways I miss how it was. The fire in me is gone. I couldn't figure out what this could be until seeing that movie, and how Riley, the main character in the story, her drive and passion and motivation and general energy changed when her anxiety decreased. This isn't a symptom of anxiety under generalized anxiety disorder in the DSM-5-TR, as far as I can tell, but I can see how the symptoms combined can lead to a drive. I haven't noticed this with any of my clients either. While I love having my anxiety under control, I really miss the fire that I had. My question is first, have you seen this phenomenon of decreased anxiety taking away motivation, drive, and passion for what someone loves? And second, any suggestions on finding that fire again? Could there be some kind of trauma response or parts issues mixed in? Or could it just be a simp uh, could it be as simple as I'm not wildly anxious as a human anymore, so maybe it's just gone? Any suggestions? Thanks, Emma, a.k.a. Tonka Truck the Pony. 
Oh, there's a picture of a Mustang on the board now. <laughs> Jacob, uh, oh my god. Oh, with a horse stick. Oh, very what? good. Did very you good. That? That's a t-shirt. That's obviously okay. a t-shirt. Uh, oh my god, I'm just getting a notification from my uh, stock in Ford. Yeah, it it's is straight up sky yeah. hard as a rock. Yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Saluting through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Or the floor. <laughs> so for everybody really quick, recap of this movie, Inside Out. Yeah. It's a Disney movie about um, a teenage girl, and the movie's about her emotions that are little characters in the movie that live in her head. And the emotions are going through this whole journey of trying to basically help her, and they're dealing with things that are their obstacles. And meanwhile, little girl's like living her life, and you're watching as different emotions control her, and she goes through her experience. In the second movie, they introduce the new emotion of anxiety. Anxiety takes control over the little girl. Um, trying to anticipate everything that could go wrong. The little girl's trying to join the high school hockey team, and she really wants to make friends and be really important. And so in her anxious state of fearing that she will not be on this hockey team and will therefore have no friends, she is extremely motivated. And this kid like goes Wayne Gretzky, and she's like waking up at 3 a.m., practicing on the ice, bullying other kids, knocking them over, taking every single shot. And she's extremely good, but she's also clearly snapping. And, and the little girl's like becoming unwound throughout the movie. The emotions have a little civil war in her head and ultimately try to stop anxiety. And anxiety basically goes into this frenzy and the little girl is like breaking down and also like accessing herself, like pushing too hard. And so she's kind of snapping and, uh, and ultimately that backfires and she kind of implodes. And so Emma's referring to that character and saying weird in that movie, anxiety is a cause of that child becoming really driven and motivated to excel at something. And Emma's relating to that and saying, I used to be very anxious and desiring to please my mentor. And I was extremely driven in my sport of, of being an equestrian rider. And, and that's what Emma's using to cue up this larger question of, do we as therapists recognize a uh, correlation between those who live with anxiety and being perhaps very motivated, very driven to succeed? It has been a long time. It was pre-Whitney when we talked about uh, kind of having emotional issues and, and uh, these types of things kind of generate a superpower. Mm, yeah. Uh, you know, the, you know, being obsessive about something, for instance. You sure. Know, you can, you can you know, sit on something for long enough and, and, and work at something long enough that you get really fucking good at it or you, you right. really excel at things. I, I mean, that, that's something that we've talked about in the past, but it's, oh, yeah. been, it's been quite a while. I. The good old days. That's what we were for. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Back when it was just the boys. <laughs> Man, this podcast great again. Yeah. 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 When right. we just hit on each other's moms. Remember? <laughs> well, you're yeah. like, yeah. my and mom the moms just weren't got, so stuck up about it. Like, my, you know? mom, my mom just got passed around. I'm like, around. It's just back and forth. There's yeah. two people. Because I'm a team player, Whitney. Jacob, right. <laughs> Jacob's just putting up nonstop pictures of What's real that? horses <laughs> oh. with their dongs out. Thanks, Jacob. That's a Mustang. Why aren't we no, streaming this? Like, <laughs> when we go that's on why. Twitch, that's the end of the show. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's no way Ouch. we survived yeah. the first episode. Oh, I don't know where that picture came from, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. That was in my personal Jim, gallery. Jim oh, yeah. Sent it. yeah. That's why I Why is that labeled earlier. medium-sized horse dick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is a good point. The superpower thing. So, like, okay, as the person who lives with anxiety at this table, um, that's very true for me. And, like, this is something that I've noticed with other people. Like, I, I emailed Nick the other day from my new uh, UNR email account. Did you get my email? <laughs> no. Yeah. I, yeah, I sent you a new email. So I got... From- yep. so, oh. I now have an email at unr.edu because I now have a third job. And and so, like, yeah. Uh, you do? I do. Oh, I'm no now going to teach at UNR. So, yay. Wow. More things going on. Another thing. But, no, I mean, like, uh. there there is a truth to that. Apparently, no one's been reading my letters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, oh, you, by the way, recommended me for this. I, uh. I appreciate it. Uh. You're doing great, buddy. We appreciate you opening up all the doors for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, like, the anxiety, I think, drives this sense of, like, if I have, like, a slow day, or like my clinical calendar gets light or, you know, you have those cancellations or whatever. Mm-hmm. I freak out because I'll be like, oh, my God, like the uh, my practice is crumbling. Nobody it's wants over. to work with me anymore. It's all <laughs> over. I need to find 10 other things that I can be involved in right now to validate my existence and provide for my family. And so, like, mm-hmm. I will immediately 
open up all these other doors. And then in that frenzied state, I'll catch fish. All of a sudden, I'll be like, yeah, Jim, we'd love to have you teach here. I'm like, shit, I did that during a really slow week. But now, now I'm, I'm going like, to yep, now I'm, <laughs> I'm committed. Like, oh, OK, yep, I'll do it. And so, like, I just sign up for all these things. And there is like this huge motivation to like start new projects or things or like even with the podcast, like, you know, Nick will tease me because in the Patreon, I'll pre-record months of material and just schedule it to be released in Mm -hmm. Patreon because I have like slow time and all of a sudden I get really motivated and driven because I'm feeling anxious Mm -hmm. of like, oh, no, it's, you know, my my week is slow. People don't want to work with me anymore. Like, am I going to fail as a therapist? Am I not, you know, useful anymore? Are people not, you know, getting anything from me? And then I'll start panicking. Be like, I need to be productive. I need to be helpful. Pod therapy. I'm going to do something with them. Those guys will appreciate this right now. And so, like, I'll just dump a bunch of energy in there. Mm. But it's entirely anxiously, like, oriented energy. So when I hear this question, I think, oh, fuck yeah. Like, that's 100% a thing that happens. So when you are not in that state, like you said, after that passes, or I would say even after, like, years have passed and you've kind of had this cycle we'll call yeah. it <laughs> not to diagnose yeah. i have this cycle <laughs> oh it's um, diagnosed Whitney. okay you go ahead <laughs> great <laughs> um, i ain't living in denial all right so you have these cycles is there ever a, a point in time where you're thinking wow i don't love the cycle even though you like the the outcome outcome yeah, yeah. or what yeah. is that experience like for you at all it's tough you know and it's interesting because if you go back into like the history of psychotherapy freud talked about this he uh-huh. called it a positive neurosis mm-hmm. and that was one of the things freud would originally try to help with is he'd say okay um in your anxious state you're over here crying and fretting you know it would be interesting build furniture you know, like, let's let's steer your energy to building furniture and use that anxiousness to, like, at least you'll have furniture, you know, mm-hmm. and then you could sell it or whatever. And so, like, for him, that was one of his earlier interventions was, I can't make it go away, so let's mm-hmm. ride that horse. Sure. Uh, and I probably shouldn't say horse. I feel like yeah. horses have been ruined. Yeah, off, off the table. And riding the horse also not okay. Um, <laughs> but so. it kind of reminded me. It'll just hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It kind of reminded me of a, a friend I have. We were recently discussing this, and they were d- talking about how they'll clean their whole house. Right. And I mean stuff I'm like, I haven't cleaned behind my stove, like, right, you know, yeah. or pulled out my fridge and right. I don't know, maybe since I moved in, like yeah. you know, things that, that they'll do. And so I asked them, I was like, Oh my gosh, I would love to be able to clean like that. And she was essentially saying, I don't like right. that I care that much about yes. that's where my energy is going, that anxious mm-hmm. energy or or whatever you want to call it for her. And I'm not saying she's diagnosed with anything like that. But this is what it reminds me of where whenever she has the downtime, she doesn't want to be thinking about like cleaning or doing other things. But having the downtime sometimes will bring up like, right. all right, I've got to be doing something. And so she ends up doing that. Yes. And so it's almost like this. Oh, it's a know. thing. Yeah. And and I don't know that every single mental health issue has some kind of corollary. Like autism does. We mm-hmm. know that there's the special thing, you mm-hmm. know, that, that oftentimes people with autism experience. ADHD well, sometimes Well, and you talk about, that. I almost wondered, like, hypervigilance for That's you. That's exactly what yeah. I think it is. I think it's yes. a little I bit I think what, what Emma is calling motivation and drive, I think is fundamentally mm-hmm. redirected hypervigilance. Sure. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, the fear of failure is a cause of anxiety. The fear of, like, failing my family mm-hmm. is a cause of anxiety, right? And so, like, oh, my God, I got to take care of that. Or, like, the same thing with parenting. Like, another big source of anxiety for me is, like, is is something wrong with my kids? Like, will I have failed them? Mm. And so, like, when I get into that spiral, all of a sudden I am doing way more proactive parenting work than most probably middle-aged men. Yeah. And I'm, like, doing everything, like, going through my kids' upcoming high school course catalog and, like, thinking ahead, like, okay, which programs would he address? You know, which ones would he like? I should highlight these and show them to him later. What clubs are in the school? I should help him find those. Like, okay, you know, and like proactively. And then, yeah, now my kid like fucking rocks at electric guitar because like I snapped a few years ago and was like, he needs to learn an instrument. That'd be good for him. Like, I'm going to research how to get him into that and like put a lot of effort into it and bought him a fucking guitar and like taught him how to play. Like now he can fucking play. And like, so there's a positive corollary with it sometimes, Mm -hmm. but also (laughs) hypervigilance like Emma can also get you in trouble where Emma's like I allowed myself to be abused yeah. and like put myself in really unhealthy situations that were completely out of balance. I 100% do that shit too. I yeah. have three jobs now. So, you know, yeah. that happens. Yeah. What's that squeaking sound? I don't know. I heard it the other day for Ice Cream Social too. They can't hear it on the on the thing, I don't think. It's just okay. something you and I can hear. <laughs> it's in your head. Ooh. Speaking of diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I like that we have a special thing. I also I want to point out. Also, in, I don't know, I don't know what it is, so it doesn't matter if people can hear it or not because I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> okay, there you go. 
Uh, I also think that for Emma, uh, they didn't mention this, but I think it's important to mention how sometimes when people have something like anxiety or like a level of bipolar disorder, things like that, where you have these spikes in maybe energy. Um, I'm going to say with hypomania, hypermanic is like a totally different realm. So yeah, Yeah. but um, I think in that hypomanic range, it's, you may start a medication. And what I've heard from clients is, oh, I started this medication and I feel like I'm not the same person. Right. That I was like, the person I yeah. was was this person who would go get shit they done. They miss it. Right. And they now they're like, the who am I now? Yeah, yeah. They don't have the confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it kind of, for I, that's what I hear in, in this is almost like that questioning, who am I now? Yeah. And what do I think about this new person? How do I interact with my partner, with my friends, right. with my family? You well, know? interesting point. So I completely relate to what you just said. Because in my journey with anxiety, there have been seasons where I've been medicated for yeah. it. And when I've been on the medicine long enough for it to settle in to work, you know, because SSRIs take time. Yeah. That is one of the things I have noticed about myself is mm. like, okay. I will like some, I'll have a slow week or I'll have downtime and like, I don't do downtime well at all. Even Mm -hmm. if it's not even work time. Like if there, if I have downtime, I feel guilty not doing something. So I'll like get up and like, okay, I need to research something or, you know, I don't know, like teach something. Or I have all these like unfinished PowerPoints that I just make. Like I have like folders and folders of PowerPoints, like explaining different mental health things in case I ever have a chance. That is the saddest statement I've ever heard anyone say. I know. I'm just like, okay, one day I'll need these. I have all these unfinished PowerPoints. (laughs) Yeah. So many. But yeah, like I don't do it well. This Saturday, I'm going to text him like, hey, you want to come over and do some PowerPoints? Yeah. Dude, don't, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> About golf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is a bait and switch. But no, when I was medicated, I remember I would get to a place where I just had downtime or some kind of empty day. And I would just be like, oh, wow, I, I'm fine. Like, I don't need to do anything. Interesting. You know, and so like I would just kind of let the time pass or I'd watch a movie. It had to be weird for you in the moment. It was You're very like, strange. <laughs> but I, I relate to those people, especially with hypomania, who are like, I'm I'm okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not currently suffering. Mm-hmm. But I also notably accomplished much less at the end of a month than I would have with my mental illness just yeah. being in the driver's seat. Yeah. So it, it's it's absolutely a thing. Mm-hmm. I've been reading a lot about uh, in uh, sports psychology, mm-hmm. oh, and cool. you've heard of like the flow state. Yeah. Oh right? yeah, yeah. So it's kind of that sweet spot of where you've got like your skill level and the challenge level are both very high, mm-hmm. right? So that's kind of the flow state. Well, um, when the skill level is lower and the challenge is very high, that space is known as anxiety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily mm. think that that's what's. That's a good point. What that, over your what, head. I, I don't think yeah. that's maybe fitting with what Emma's describing here. Mm-hmm. But to kind of bring that in case anybody else can kind of relate to this, because I do think that this does happen a lot in sports where you have like the, the challenge that is set before you, either by uh, the, the league that you're playing in or the competition or the. Yeah, the pressure set on you by the coach, whatever it is, that challenge is extremely high. Right. The skill level is not there for what the challenge is, and that creates anxiety. Right. So it's not necessarily I have anxiety, and the anxiety is causing this uh, decrease in driver motivation. Sometimes it's the other way around. Right. Where your driver motivation is not going to maintain at that level because no one wants to be in that spot. Right. No, I think that's really true. There's a correlation for sure. Yeah. I think there's definitely a correlation. Yeah. I haven't seen, uh, like, her question, you know, I haven't personally seen too many clients who deal with anxiety who are like, I love this high level I'm at, right. you know. No, you still suffer. <clears throat> Which, suffering I mean, the whole she time. pointed out it's not part of the diagnosis. Yeah. So I think that's valid and important just that she pointed that out. But it is valid, yeah, just feeling like, man, do you... What did you get from having that fire? Oh, I wanted to point out too, just again, as we get older, I think I hear this even amongst my own friends, like, I don't know how old Emma is, I guess, but talking about things we're interested in our teens when we have sort of time and energy to put into all of that, if you add on that drive, whether it's from anxiety or anything else, that is so powerful. And as adults, we may find ourselves shifting in things we used to put a lot of energy toward. We don't as much anymore. And again, it's still a weird feeling. You're like questioning who you are. Oh, am I the 
type of person that I used to be? Is is this me, a new me? Am I? Is it because of my mental health? Is it because I'm just getting older? It's right. I talk about this with friends all the time where you're kind of shifting a yeah. little bit. And some of that's just societal norms. You are working. You have horses to take care of. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, know? you bring up a good point. Like as you accomplish more, there's less of a void, you know? And yes. I think that also yeah. it calms down the hustle. Yeah. You know, the hunger makes you hustle. And it's like when you yeah. don't have much, you're like, I got to accomplish all this stuff. I'm scared of what's out there. Yeah. You swim harder. You yeah. know, when you have a raft, it's like, well, okay, paddle, you know. But yes, you're fine. that's a great analogy and better analogies. Nick hasn't done any analogies in a while. I got to No, I got to pace myself. Oh. I don't want to give everybody good analogies all okay. at once because then I get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We get spoiled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is very much like a horse race. You know? <laughs> yeah. How so? Yeah, sex mostly. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. You go to good horse races. I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, Chip I, goes with all the best horse. I races. go to the national finals rodeo and I watch him finish, <laughs> and it's good. Emma, good question. Everybody should see that movie, uh, Inside Out Two. It's a I really good movie. Go Sponsor it. of the show, Disney Channel. Uh, that would be yeah, great. We know you're listening. Yeah, I know yeah. Disney <laughs> listens to the show. Um, so as we wrap up the show, I want to remind you, you can go to patreon.com slash therapy. You can get the extended show ad free a day earlier, as well as enjoy our live chat discord community, our weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, research roundups, and rants. And Hey, um, uh, producer note here in a second, I'm going to read a new five-star review we got, but we are officially on YouTube. So I you, saw that I watched through some videos. Did you? <laughs> well, so <through>. YouTube <laughs> uh, music is the app now that replaced Google podcasts. And so I figured out how to get our stuff uploaded, and I believe by now our entire backlog is uploaded. And I believe YouTube, we've already had an episode taken down. Yes, no! YouTube has been shitting bricks. Oh. <laughs> like as soon as I uploaded it, it's like, would you like to upload the whole catalog? And I was like, oh, that's very convenient. Excellent. Here you go. And YouTube's like, oh, holy shit, you have a lot of uh, videos uh, or, or content. Um, we're gonna do this in phases. You know, mm. like twenty or fifty a day. It's mm. like, all right, that's cool. Yeah. Every day. Our email just gets spammed with YouTube <laughs> violations. Can't do that. And it's just Can't going, say that. hey, this is not appropriate Can't for children. It. Hey, this is not okay. Hey, this is banned in Argentina. Oh. Really happened. Yeah. Oh, and so no. like, just so you know, this episode will not be allowed to be listened to in Argentina. I don't know. I don't know what we did, <laughs> but apparently it's illegal. It was, it was that other horse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's yeah, really it funny. Like as their AI is transcribing every episode, oh it's gosh. figuring out all the curse words we use oh. and, and just being like, bing, bing. It's just like the inbox is so filled with violations now. Oh, no. And it's funny because every don't time it happens. Fuck the horse in Argentina. <laughs> 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 it may be illegal. You know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, but anyway, we're there. So YouTube, uh, you can find us on YouTube at Pod Therapy Guys. Uh, that's still the handle over there, too. And uh, we are now posting all of our stuff regularly there. So if you're more the type that, for whatever reason, you want to listen through that platform, go for it. A lot of new listeners apparently are finding us on there. Um, and I think it's just people are randomly going through and searching for, you know, mental health content. And now they're stumbling upon this. Hmm. And we're getting a lot of comments and it's it's frustrating because the comments are definitely people who have not listened to much of the show. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're just like quickly picking up on that one. Because I think YouTube is a lot more searchable. Mm. And so I think you can find the precise area of the show that we're answering a question you were interested right. in or something. Because like the thing actually slices every episode into chapters. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, it's very yeah. interesting. But that, I think, is, is my worst nightmare uh, being realized. That there are people getting to zoom in on terrible things. <laughs> And do not make friends with us first. Like, are not Aww. going through the car wash yeah, of getting That's your anxiety us. talking, Jim. <laughs> yeah, no, it's on fire. Uh, it has been really bad. But at least our iTunes is going up. We are, as I record this, at 98 reviews. We are two away from the Golden 100. Uh, two more. And Mom, our leave a latest review. one. <laughs> yeah, get on yeah. there. Our latest one from Forgetful Parker wrote, Great show. Nick, Jim, Whitney, and Jacob are awesome. The attributes of the show are informative and funny. It's a veritable Woo! reservoir of information. Oh, he almost did it. He almost wow. did it. Reservoir. I'll take it. Five stars. I'll read whatever you write. We want to thank our Patreons who support the show at patreon.com slash therapy. Who's joining the therapy party, Nick? We got a new therapy pal, Stuart Wilson. Stuart. Hey, Stuart. Stuart. <laughs> Stuart. Stuart, get down. <laughs> Let me do Stop it. it. Stop. I can do it. 
<laughs> What's the one where the guy he he acts like a a badass boyfriend and the girlfriend's always like, "No, stop it, Tim! Don't hurt him!" And then he's like, "You want to go? You want to go, turkey?" Like he calls everybody a turkey, and then he like tries to fight them, and people think like they're really scared of him because he's actually big. And then he fights like Stewart, like he's just really weird, he's, uh, uh, and like feather hit. You've never seen this? I don't it's know. on Mad TV. I don't remember uh, what the guy's name is, but I know he calls people turkey. Anyway. It sounded like Wanda. All right, right. yeah. Right there <laughs> yeah. With that whole anyway. Monologue. <laughs> Uh, we do want to thank the benevolent, revered, generous, and flagrantly pro-therapy diehards who love you all so much they give till it hurts. The Thera Partners, thank you, Dirty B and Pickett. Woo. And we want to thank our mysterious, shrouded, Illuminati members of the fan club, the Thera Producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Myra, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Don, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Mrs. and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Mason Miller, Richard fucking Macy, Carolyn <laughs> Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley, Slap in Your Face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, Mike Helm, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder Cougar Falcon Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangerman, Heyo, Oscar Swanrose, A Sunny Boy, Slurpy Kaye, Motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, Dan Martin, Hannah Marie, Andrew Langmead, Bug Nuts, and Emma Kane. <laughs> And if you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited, and, and why, why wouldn't you? And enjoy our spontaneous <laughs> side projects, go to patreon.com slash therapy, and thank you for supporting mental health. That's all the time we got for this week's session. want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast, and thanks to Mama Kathy, who Woo! joined us today all the way from New Mexico. Woo! We do appreciate it. Remember, pop therapy isn't something you keep all to yourself. Share the episode with the world. Tag us on the socials when you do. It's at Pop Therapy Guys on Instagram, Threads, and Twitter. It's slash Pot Therapy on Facebook and at Pot Therapy Guys on YouTube. And don't forget about all the extra goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. And do you want to submit a question to the show? You can ask anonymously at pottherapy.net or email us at pottherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangerman. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. I'm Jim Jobin. <laughs> Thanks. And we'll see you for appointment next week. Wait, anything, that was so inappropriate. Anything you put in the script. Why did you I'll do read it. Week? I'll read it. <laughs> I was like, hmm, this is different. <laughs> hey, hey, YouTube. Cunt. <laughs> oh no, no! <laughs> what have you done? I thought the Argentina one would be cunt wallet.